All right, let's get right to it. Most important non-quarterbacks for the AFC and NFC championships. Sorry, trivia fans, no time for it today. Chris, you got the first pick. Gosh, there's so many guys to pick from in this one. It is, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. There's, there's, I, I don't know. I don't. Is it, is it weird? Does do I feel like there's more stars in the championship yes. game weekend than ever before? Like true stars, yes. right? Um, I'm gonna go with Aaron Donald to lead it off. I mean, I, I'm just going to go there because you're on a six-game losing streak. Everybody talks about why are you losing. Oh, because the 49ers can run the ball right at this Rams defensive line. All right, well, Aaron Donald, you and your homies up and run. It's, it's going to be on you guys. You and Ashawn Robinson and Gaines and Floyd and Von Miller, uh, but specifically Aaron Donald. He's got to be big time in the middle of that defense and cause some disrupt- disruption and and as we like to say, F the play up here uh, a whole bunch of times to slow down that 49ers rushing attack. The draft is most important non-quarterback. Obviously, the first four picks would all be quarterbacks if we, we allowed them into this. I'm going to go Travis Kelsey because we saw on Sunday night he's an extension of the quarterback. That ability to improvise, that, that communication between him and Patrick Mahomes that set up the play that saved the game, that put it into overtime. Oh, and then he caught the touchdown pass at the back of the end zone. A great catch. That's kind of gotten overlooked in the the wizardry that happened to force overtime. But the connection between Kelsey and Mahomes, remember after Mahomes' first year, it's like everywhere he went, Kelsey was there. Texas Tech in the in the uh, NCAA tournament, Kelsey's there riding sidecar to Mahomes. Like they share a brain. It's like Gronk and Tom Brady. So uh, if we can't go quarterbacks, let me go the next best thing. Travis Kelsey, who also, you know, who knows? Maybe he'll throw a pass in the AFC Championship. I mean, yeah, who knows? You're right. I mean, damn. I mean, we we saw Debo Samuel throw a touchdown pass against the Rams in Week 18 that helped them win the football game. Uh, You're going to see some tricks this week, I would think, from one of these teams. I think I'm going to go with George Kittle. I'm going to kind of go off your Kelsey thing a little bit. George Kittle kind of been flying under the radar the last few weeks. Uh, I think this could be a week where you go, wait, the Rams are going to be so focused on the run game and Debo Samuel and all they do. George Kittle, I think, can play a role in this as far as off of that. And what will Shanahan have in his bag of tricks to go, oh, wait, here's the fake to Debo. Oh, no, here goes George Kittle. Watch out. You better watch out for him. Uh, I think he's got to play a role in this game because, again, I just I don't you can't go in and just think you're going to definitely take over with Debo. Not against this defense the way they're playing. You got to have some other element in my opinion uh to to attack this Rams unit. Jamar Chase is my yeah. next pick just mm-hmm. because we talked about it at length earlier what the Chiefs do to defend him, how they react and respond to what happened Earlier this month, it is weird to think that they played this month. I keep looking at the schedule. They did. It wasn't that long ago. What the Chiefs did, what they'll do now, how the offense is going to be affected by it. He's the uh, the keystone, the fulcrum, the uh, the something. He, he's the straw that stirs the drink for that offense because how the Chiefs deal with him is going to go a long way toward determining what the Bengals' offense does or doesn't do. <laughs> There are the first two rounds. We're into round three. Chris Sims, you're up. Most important on quarterback this weekend. I'm going to go with Lou Anarumo, Anarumo from the Cincinnati Bengals, defensive coordinator. Uh, I've been Ooh. really impressed. You know, one of my complaints about the Bengals during the regular season was a little simplistic on the defensive side of the ball. You know, not great to size is a little really well coached, but just always looked at them and went, eh, I need a little more creativity or, you know, messing with the quarterbacks if you guys want to make a run in the playoffs. He's done that the last two weeks where I've been really impressed. There were some great blitzes and dropouts and things like that against the Tennessee Titans last week. He's got to find the right touch and, hey, We don't want to let the big play up, but knowing when to roll the dice and go, you know what, it's time. I'm going to trust a Chidobe Awuze on a Tyree kill here, and I'm going to bring a blitz that might confuse them a little bit and cause a turnover. I look at him. Last one for me, Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa, plain and simple. Got to put the heat on Matthew Stafford. Got to challenge him. Got to press him. Got to do it with your front four. No zero blitzes, Kyle Shanahan. No zero blitzes of Matthew Stafford. Hope that Nick Bosa can get to him and create some havoc. And But just watch out, Nick, because you never know when Stafford's going to kick you. <laughs> you never know. You're so full of crap. That's when it. your knee gets <laughs> like jammed in, it has to go back out. He didn't kick See him. See you at 5 o'clock. See ya. <laughs> 
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.